بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و الصلاة و السلام على سیدنا و نبینا و طبیب نفوسنا و حبیب قلوبنا ابل قاسم محمد صل الله عليه و آله و سلم لا سيما بقية الله روحي و ارواح العالمين لمقدمه الفداء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشئين الذين يظنون أنهم ملاقو ربهم وأنهم إليه راجعون صلوات Respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our worshipping during the nights of the month of Ramadan and fasting during the days of the month of Ramadan Ya Allah, inshallah, we are only few more nights left before we farewell for good this month of Ramadan Ya Allah, inshallah, this month of Ramadan the reality of it that is the gate known as Rayyan one of the gates of paradise that is exclusively for the fasters for those who were blessed to fast the month of Ramadan Ya Allah, inshallah, that gate will open before all of us, all mu'mineen, mu'minat around the globe that they have been observing the obligation of fasting in the months of Ramadan and inshallah we are all included with salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad <laughs> Few nights ago inshallah you remember quickly to recap we spoke about the meaning of namaz, daily prayers very briefly and we explained that the daily prayers as it was prescribed to the Prophet and the Prophet experienced it in his ascension uh, journey and for that reason uh, daily prayers is an experience of ascension for everyone who prays and we briefly went through the meaning of it to convey this message what inshallah in sh tonight I want to uh, share with you is that if is this achievable? Is it possible for me, Sheikh, also that my Salat becomes an ascension? Or what we hear a lot about the importance of the presence of the heart during the prayer, is it something that for us ordinary humans is achievable or it is not achievable? Inshallah, I will promise you by the end of the session tonight, I give you the most practical solution for this only if you mean to do it. I cannot do it for you, you cannot do it for me, but I promise you sitting here according to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt salam, that no one will leave the, uh, the, this Husseiniyya tonight unless they has learned or she has learned a practical way that from tomorrow morning any time that you pray your namaz is record, recorded and uh, registered as the one whose heart is present. Is it a good deal or not? Okay, inshallah. Let's see if I can deliver my, my promise or not. The answer to this question is in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, Ayah 45 and 46, that I just began my talk, inshallah, tonight with. In that Ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, and I quote, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ For your spiritual elevation, for your spiritual journey, not only a spiritual journey to uh, tackle the problems, uh, difficulties that you face in your life, whether the life of dunya or akhara, I have equipped you potentially with two tools. Adhering to these two, you will have your problems solved. The first is patience. Patience is a virtue. 
you lose your uh, deal when you lose your patience. A student who succeeded in their study are those who had more patience. Those who lost not because they were less intelligent, the other one was more intelligent. Those who lost mainly is because they didn't have enough persuasion and patience. So patience definitely is an internal tool that we all need to be able to tackle and overcome the difficulties of dunya as well as akhirah. This is a different story, different category. We don't need to open that file of patience. I'm just translating the idea. Wasta'inu sabr. So God says first and foremost, seek the help by patience. There is an, an external tool that God has sent to us, an external rope that God has sent down to us, that God says that if you adhere to that, that will lift you up and elevate you out of the difficulties that you have, or will spiritually elevate you. Before this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been few ayat before this, has been just telling us about the obligation of salat. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَوْتُ الزَّكَاةِ وَرْكَعُ مَعَ الرَّاكِئِينَ Especially this expression of aqim salat wa atu zakat have been repeatedly, inshallah, you are familiar with the Quran, have been repeatedly mentioned in the Quran. But the question that why do I need to pray, Ya Allah? What's the significance of them? What's the special about this daily prayer? Is it just a ritualistic uh, culture that we have every day that we have to do it? Or there are really benefits in it. This ayah is an answer to that question. That God says that yes, there are benefits in this salat. As we said, salat is the wasl, is the connection. So grab, hold on to that rope, and it will not only spiritually elevate you, and once you are spiritually elevated, you can tackle the problems. Between brackets, one of the difference between believers and disbelievers is not that once you become a mu'min, or you become a practicing Muslim, no more family issues, no more business issues, no more illness comes to your house, no more problems, there is no such things. Some people mistakenly, they assume that, okay, she says, now that I've converted to Islam, how come that still I'm facing so many problems? Or now that I've become a practicing Muslim, there are more problems in my life. Nobody has said that becoming Muslim or becoming a better Muslim, you will not face any problems. If that was the case, the prophets would not have all those trials and hardship. God would not test his prophet Ayyub for years of being bedridden with all those uh, severe illnesses. The difference is that a believer, a true believer, because they are equipped with patience and with salat, they don't give up. They don't surrender to the problems. Problems, they don't shatter them. You know, this is an important issue. In dunya, everybody has to face difficulties. This is part of life of dunya. But the, the stronger your faith is, the less difficulties of life will shatter you and break you. You will be a, you will be a strong person. So Quran says that the second tool is this salat. Hold on to the Salat, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِسَابْ Seek the help by patience, and the second by As-Salat. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشَئِينَ This second, the rope that we have sent, this Salat, it is a hard practice. Unfortunately, let's examine ourselves. When it comes to Salat, we don't have time. When it comes to, like you are inviting someone over, and we make sure that especially we want to respect the guests, there is like an entree and then the main course and then the dessert and, and a variety. You know, as much as we can provide, we make sure that there's a variety of food on the table and we take our time around the table close to sit, eat and enjoy our time. When it comes to salad, everyone is in a rush. And then there is no formality between us and God to put a, like a pray mat or anything. Just a simple more will do somewhere. It's okay, I'll just stay and pray. No formality. But if somebody invites you to their house and with no table cloth or anything, they'll just give you a plate and sit somewhere and eat. <laughs> you, feel, you feel perhaps offended. What kind of hospitality is that? Why is it that... Uh, one of the mystics on the Arafah, he says that people may make a mistake. They think that once you are more friendly, there should not be any formality. And this is one of the problems of the family issues. Husband and wife become too informal with one another. You see that God forbid even they sewer at each other. 
no respect whatsoever it's wrong on the contrary the closer you get to each other there should be more respect more formality more honoring each other and so forth he says especially this should be observed when you are in relation with God and that's why awliya Allah you see that when it comes to their prayer because of the close relation they have with God they care more about mustahabbat Mustahabbat, it means all the etiquette of the namaz. And I'll inshallah tell you that how much it will contribute to have your heart present. Okay? So, Bastainu Bessab Quran, by the way, said that seek the help by patience. For your world be matter. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, The Prophet of Islam, anytime, Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Anytime. Rasulullah faced any difficulties in his life in any way, form, or shape. He used to make wudu, stand, and offer prayers and seek the help of Allah through the salat. Salat connects him to God, gets the strength, inspiration, and then he'll be able to tackle the issues. It was the practice of Imam Sadiq himself as well. It was the Imam Sadiq said it was the practice of Amirul Mu'minin. So from this we can gather that all the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, any to, at the time of hardship, they would strengthen their relation with God because you'll be connected to infinity. Now you know why in the night of Ashura, Imam Hussain alayhi salam is telling Abu al-Fadl Abbas, tell them give us one more night. Not because we just want to live one more night in our life. No, because we want to spend the last night of our life in dedication of worshipping and doing namaz and all these things. Getting the strength. So the demonstration of uh, like bravery that we see from the shohada of Karbala on the day of Ashura, the fuel of it was the night before. And such nights like the night before they, they left in the night of Ashura, in their communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even our scholars, uh, Abu, Sina, Abu Ali Sina, the genius person, a couple of times uh, this year I've spoken about him. He has written an autobiography about himself. He says that at the age of 18, I mastered all the sciences of my time. There was nothing else for me to that I didn't know. Until I came across a book written by Aristotle, known as Metaphysics, Ma Ba'du Tabi'a. I read this book once, twice, three times. I don't understand it. What is this that Abu Ali Sina doesn't understand it? I was very much disappointed uh, with myself. I decided, I said, I have a clue now how to understand this book. Made my wudu, went to Masjid Jame of my uh, city in Hamadan apparently, offered two rakat prayer and asked Allah subhanahu wa to inspire me to be able to understand this book. Okay. Mullah Sadra, the famous uh, uh, Muslim philosopher of about 400 years ago also. I remember in which part of uh, even the book of Asfar al-Arba is that very comprehensive book he has in Islamic philosophy. In one discussion, very important discussion about, uh, uh, it's about the intelligent, the intelligence and the one who uh, like understands the intelligence. He says that that discussion, I discovered it by making my wudu and going to the haram of uh, Hazrat Ma'asume in Rome. Mind you that he was living in a, in a village about 10 kilometers away from Rome, known as Kahak. On foot, 10 kilometers or so, on foot, walking to the haram of Hazrat Ma'asume in Rome, praise over there and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behaq Hazrat Ma'asume in Rome to inspire me to understand and to be able to present this philosophical discussion. So even in their philosophical, in their scientific research, our scholars of the past, they were not only scientists, they were so religious that they were, they used to link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through salat and get the knowledge. Because al-ilmu nurun yaghdifuhu allahu fi qalb man yasha. Knowledge is light that God casts into the heart of whoever he wants. And that comes best during the salat. So, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ Quran says, is it like a burden? It is hard. Unless for those who tasted the beauty of Salat. And those, those are khashayin. That inshallah, I'll, I'll tell you who they are tonight. And the khashayin, and to be like, to gain this Salat of the reverend. When I saw the sign, the, the prayer of the reverend, I said, maybe some people who are familiar with the Christian uh, like life they think that I'm talking about the salat of a priest because you know often they refer to him as reverend so John reverend Patrick or anything no that's not what you are talking about reverend people I'll tell you who the, the reverend are 
Quran so says that it is difficult, it's a burden on them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says with all respect, with all respect, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. No offense to anyone, but I'm just translating the hadith. It may apply to me before anyone else, okay? The Prophet says that, you know among you who is the thiefest of the thieves? Asraqun nas man saraqa min salate. The thiefest of the thieves is the one who steals from his salat. Yani when it comes, comes to food, when it comes to socialization, when it comes to standing out and chit-chatting, he has plenty time. When it comes to namaz, we have no time. This is the trick of shaitan, be careful. The moment you say, Allahu Akbar, shaitan is pushing you, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. You're going to be late, you're going to be late, you're going to be late. You have to do this, you have to do that. Millions of ideas and plans or things will be bombarded to your mind. This is the trick of shaitan, because he wants you to steal your namaz, to be the thiefest of the thieves. The remedy is that when you say, Allahu Akbar, and shaitan is pushing you, I have no life. I'm free. I've got the rest of the day, the rest of the night. I'm not in a rush, my friend. And I'll tell you that how by this you can, inshallah, achieve this khushu in the namaz. So, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Who are the khashi'in? The secret key is here tonight, about the khashi'in. In Arabic language, brothers and sisters, we have tawadu' at least, and we have khushu. There are more in between. I don't get to the technicality of it. It's enough to just explain these two words. Tawadu, it means humbleness of the body. As it is, we are expected to respect our parents and elderly people with respect. This is called tawadu, humbleness in English. Okay? It's very important. Even when it comes to our namaz, it's important to have the tawadu, meaning that physically be humble before God. Don't stand like an arrogant person before God. I will read a hadith, a brilliant hadith. I have a hadith with you tonight that really this one is so unique in all the books of hadith that we have when it comes to namaz. Yani if I want to tell you of five volumes of Asal Shia, if there is only one hadith that is cream of all the had hadith of namaz, that is so valuable is this one. That inshallah I'll share with you my humble gift to this uh, gathering tonight. And this is the hadith that all our fuqaha they accept it and give fatwa to it. In terms of the authenticity of the hadith, there's absolutely no doubt about it. The narrator has looked as if he had a camera uh, in, in hand and was recording the namaz of Imam Jafar Sadiq salam. Imagine, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Inshallah, I'll mention this. In that, you will see that how Imam Jafar Sadiq cares about the appearance, his appearance during the namaz as well as the presence of the heart in the namaz as well. So it is wrong. Some people, they think that uh, I should concentrate on the essence of the namaz, the spirituality of the namaz. It really doesn't matter how I physically do it. No, it's the whole package, my friend. You have to do it all together. Stand before God as humble as you can. At the same time, pay attention to the meaning of namaz and go to the heart of the namaz, that is presence of the heart as well. So tawadu, it means the physical appearance. The only thing is that the physical appearance or the physical humbleness, I can, God forbid, fake it. We all know that physically we can fail. You know, there are unfortunately some hypocrites that they see each other, they smile, but behind, yeah, I hate him. Just when he sees him, he smiles, but as soon as, oh, I don't want to see him. So yeah, physical uh, tawadu or humbleness, it is possible to fake. Even astaghfirullah before God, let alone human beings. But the inner tawadu that is called khushu, so khushu is the humbleness of the heart. And that's the translation I suggest, reverence, veneration, and things like that. That one, nobody can fake it. Because there's no reason to fake it. There's no, you know, it's, it's not a show of. Let's first look at the tawadu of the body of the namaz. We have to start our namaz from its appearance until we get to the kernel of the namaz. And this is where we need that hadith that I told you. One of the companions, very eminent companions of Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam, his name is Hamad ibn Isa. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This Hamad is not just an ordinary uh, uh, companion, ordinary Shia. He is like, I'll tell you, uh, he will introduce himself. 
He says, I went to the Imam and the Imam says that, Hamad, do you know how to pray? I said, my dear Imam, I have memorized the book of Hariz. Hariz is another companion from today's uh, Sistan, Balochistan, where Ayatollah Sistani is coming originally from. It's known, that back then they would say uh, Sajistani. Hariz Sajistani had written a book of all the ahadiths of the Imams about Namaz. He says, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, I have memorized the book of Hariz. I am a teacher of Namaz. So you, you are asking me, I know that. And the Imam says that, how embarrassing it is for someone to have reached the age of 50, 60, 70, and still doesn't know how to pray. He says, I didn't know what did the Imam mean. And then the Imam says that, okay, Hariz, why don't you get up to offer two rakat prayer? Let me just see how you pray. Imagine, yani the, astaghfirullah, I'm giving this example of, of myself, maybe after years of teaching, preaching, Imam Zaman comes to Sheikh Mansur, stand up for two rakat prayer, let me see you know if, how, if you know how to pray. Yani, Hamad says that oh, I stood up and Allahu Akbar, two rakat prayer, I finish and the Imam says, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, hariz. Uh, sorry, Hamad, so embarrassing, you don't know how to pray. Aja. Please check your namaz. Less Imam Zaman says the same to you and I. This Hamad is not an ordinary person. By the way, Hamad says that that's his word. He says, I felt so humiliated before the Imam. Alhamdulillah, my students are not around. What embarrassing. I said, Yabn al okay, you stand and pray. Let me see how you pray then. I thought that's how we pray. And, he's, and that's what I say that, subhanAllah, we are so much indebted to him for this hadith. Like as if there is a camera in his hand and he's recording. He's telling us even how, what's the distance between the feet of the Imam. If you see that our marajah, they say this, they are taken from this. He tells us where the hands of the Imam's, uh, Imam were. Like he says that the Imam was not, like obviously like this, does not, uh, his hands were not dropped on the side. His hands, the palms of his hands are touching his thighs. And that's how humbly he is. I'm speaking about the humbleness in the namaz, the appearance of the namaz. By the way, he says Imam started the namaz, hamd and surah, part of it that is related. If I had time, I needed one session to just explain this, this hadith to you. He says when Imam went to the ruku, his back was so flat. The expression that he has given, he, he says that look as if, if you were pouring water on the back of the Imam, it would not fall. That's how his back, uh, how flat it was. And uh, he, the palms of hands are touching the knees. This is for men, by the way, not for the ladies, uh, as we know the rules. And the Imam, three times, he says, Subhana Rabbi ala azim wa bihamdeh. Subhana Rabbi ala azim wa bihamdeh. Subhana Rabbi ala azim wa bihamdeh. I don't say it's obligatory to say that. But here between the brackets, the quick point I make, brothers and sisters, one of the meanings of tawassul to Ahlul Bayt is to read the dua of what they've been reading. You know, you can open the, you can just raise your hands and talk to God as you wish. But when you are reading the dua that is, uh, come to, has come to us from Ahlul Bayt like dua Kumay, like dua Abu Hamza, like dua Joshan, like dua Iftita, because you are talking to God, with the words of Ma'asumin, it's just like you are going on the path of the communica communication of Ma'asumin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's more effective. Keep this in mind. Likewise, you can say in your ruku, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. It's, or even Subhanallah suffices. Jama'ah prayer especially, to keep it short, it's acceptable. But if you make the pattern of your namaz with the pattern that Imam Sadiq did, you are on the path to communication with God on the path of Imam Sadiq I have found this that for those who are looking for the presence of the heart, this is where it starts from. This is where it starts from. Follow the footsteps of Ahlul Bayt al Muslim. How they did their prayers, this is where you can start the presence of the heart. So he says that Imam three times in Ruhu, Subhana Rabbi al Azim wa Bahamdi, Subhana Rabbi al Azim wa Bahamdi, Subhana Rabbi al Azim wa Bahamdi. Then he stood up. He's not in a rush. Not just bang, bang, bang. I said it yesterday. Someone was uh, telling me that, Sheikh, is it possible for morning prayer not to make wudu? I said, and why don't you want to make wudu? 
And she goes, because I don't want to wake up. <laughs> I'm still sleepy. Allah Akbar. Terrible namaz, very terrible, quick. We are now, Sama'allahu liman hamida, Allahu Akbar. And then the moment to the sajda. He has described the sajda of, I told that, I'm just going, skimming through the hadith. And uh, again, in sajda, Imam three times says, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi. Sits of astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi. By the way, he has explained how Imam patiently, humbly, without being in a rush, he offered to rekat namaz. And then the Imam says, Ya Hamad ha kada salli. If you want to pray, that's how you're supposed to pray the body of your namaz. Now we want to get to the heart of the namaz, to become among those that Allah subhanahu wa praises that the namaz is salatul khashayin with salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ My Almighty God, who are the khashi'in? Those who are revering in their namaz. The next ayah explains. الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ First question, Ya Allah, is it possible that my namaz becomes also the namaz of the reverent people? Rawayat says that it's a challenge, but you can get there. If you really mean it, you can get there. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, is it possible, how can I get to the level of Salatul Khashayin, that I'm among those that their Salat is considered Salatul Khashayin? The Prophet says, Ya Abu Dhar, awwalu ma yurfa' min hadihi al-umma al-amana wal-khushu. Hatta la takadu taro khasha. Let me tell you, the very first that this community loses as individual or as community, not this community in general, the Prophet is saying, is trust, being trustworthy, and also the namaz being namaz al khashain. It is so real that as if hardly you see anyone that the namaz is namaz al khashain. So, yes, there is a challenge here. But Quran has given us clues as how we can overcome. And win this challenge. Quran says that the very first is that, my friend, you need to create an environment for yourself. Some of the brothers have been to their houses here and elsewhere. It's a very good habit and it's mustahab. Part of your house, make it as like a musalla, as a masjid, at least a premat. Even in your bedroom, if possible, dedicate a place that this is a place for my namaz. It, Okay, that this is like a very holy uh, part of your, your house or your room for your namaz. The prayer mat is always open and, and therefore for your namaz. Pray together at home. These are contributions toward that what we want to achieve. It is very healthy for the man of the house. If you are not coming to the masjid, it's not possible for whatever, of course, preferably attend the jama'ah of the masjid. But if it's not possible, don't pray on your own separate. Brother, man of the house, you lead the prayer. As you eat together, you pray together. Those who pray together, live together. Live more and better together. Sisters, if you want your husbands behave well, let them lead the prayer. Because you know what? Once I lead the prayer, I make sure that my wife doesn't uh, consider me fasik or always she treats me as just because I have to be just to lead the prayer. So I behave myself so that otherwise she's not going to turn up tomorrow to pray behind me. It works for even for family issues, it, it works. Let alone that we bring the bond of family, you know, brings them together. These are preparation. Quran says that if, when you want to pray, my friend, remember. And, and I, let me have quote the hadith. Imam Sadaq explains this one here. He said, Ya Abba Basir, Ida qumta ila salat, fa'alam annaka bayna yadayillahi azza wa jal. فَإِنْ كُنْتَ لَا تَرَى فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكِ Ya Abu Basir, when you want to say Allahu Akbar, don't just say Allahu Akbar. Prepare yourself that I'm standing before God on my pray mat, I'm standing before God as if, forgive me for the examples that I give, so that we can grasp the, the issue. From the corner of your eye, assume that أَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى Does he know not God, that God is watching him? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. As if God is sitting there, is watching you that you pray. Surely we behave better. 
So the moment that you want to say Allahu Akbar, first you have to make this environment for yourself. Quran doesn't say, I wish I had time to elaborate on these ayat. Alladhina yadhunnuna annahum mulaqu. In Arabic we have yulaqu and mulaqu. Yulaqu is the present tense, mulaqu is the smell fa'il. Present tense, it means that they are going to meet with God at the time of their death. That's not what the Quran says. Go back home to not check the translations of the Quran. Almost all of them, you see that they have made a mistake here in translating this ayah. They translated it as, as if it is fail al present tense. It's not present tense, it's ismail fa'il. Which means that right now they are in the presence of God. Not that they are going to meet with God upon their death or in the future. Ismail falak, in, in Arabic I say, ana qa'id, I'm not sitting. Ana aq'od, yani I will sit later on. Not that I am sitting now. Quran doesn't say الَّذِينَ يَضُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُلَاقُوا No, أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ Right now they are in the meeting with God. Remember that's what we said that namaz is meeting with God. So when I want to say Allahu Akbar, you want Salat al-Khashayin? Remember my friend, you are in meeting with God right now. Right now you are in the presence of God. And Imam Sadiq says that if you cannot see God, rest assured that He's seeing you. Isn't that enough? Someone asked Ayatollah Bahjad that uh, how can I see Imam Zaman? He said it doesn't matter how you see him. It's what matters to you at the moment is that he sees you. Think about this that he sees you definitely. Whether you see him or not, rest assured that he sees you. And how would he see me? In which condition? In which like how, how I would be when he sees me? So the first is that remember that you are always in the presence of God. But Sheikh, during my namaz, I again go absent-minded. Bring your mind back again. Anytime you notice, bring it back. You notice, bring it back. Did I mention this hadith to you that uh, the Prophet once asked his companions, whoever can offer two rakat namaz with the presence of heart, I give, you, I, I give him a red uh, uh, hair uh, camel, which was a very, imagine a very high-class Mercedes, very, very expensive uh, camel. None other than Amir al of course, they are coming forward. Imam Ali says, Ya Rasulullah, I will offer two rakat namaz with the presence of heart. Bismillah, Ya Ali. Imam started the namaz towards the end of namaz. As he was saying, the tashahud, it just in microsecond crossed the mind of Amir al that if I win, I'm going to give this uh, camel as a charity. I don't want the Mercedes. I just give it as charity. Just one microsecond. Namaz is over. The Prophet says, Ya Ali, you failed. <laughs> <laughs> Jibreel descended, there is a hadith, Jibreel descended to earth, Ya Rasulallah, the Almighty God says, accept his namaz, because in his namaz, he, he, he yes, microsecond, he thought of giving the camel as a charity, that was also a godly thought, that was even a godly thought, so accept it, he passed, give him fast mark and give him the camel. Moral of the story, yes, it is a challenge to remember the namaz, remember I have the heart presence throughout the namaz, but I, I, I have promised you that you all will meet it tonight. Remember the promise that I have mentioned. These are things, but I have, on my last card, I still I have not showed it to you. I, will, I, I have to show you the last one, inshallah, at the end. But for the time being, part of it is that any time in the namaz you were absent-minded, again, remember yourself, you're in the presence of God. You are talking to God. God is watching you. God is watching you. And there's more into it. I'm just trying to cut it short, really, because I want to get to the end of it. Even this part has more elaboration on it. The second thing, the second factor that is very helpful for the namaz, that is mentioned in the ayah, وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Again, the very fine translation we need here. Or answers, the first factor was that they need to believe that they are in the presence of God, right now meeting with God. And the second, they need to believe that they are dying. Again, brothers, sisters, I need your kind attention. Raja' you hear the sound of it. Raja' fa'il. Do you hear the sound? The same sound? So raja' is fa'il. Raja'un is the proper form of raja'. Yaraja' is fil al Present tense. Raja isma fa'il. Isma fa'il, it means that someone who's right now in a, in a situation. According to the teachings of the Quran, let me be frank with all of you, with all respect. Sorry, moms. Quran says, Inna ka mayyit wa inna hum mayyitun. My dear messenger, you are dead. They're all dead. 
Not that they will die. Quran doesn't say, Inna kasa tamud wa inna hum sayamutu. No, you are right, not dead. But God, I'm alive. You think you are alive. You are dead. They are all dead as well. Quran says, Kullu man alayha fan. Every so-called living creature on the surface of the earth, fan is perishing now. Right now is perishing, dying. Because the, the wisdom behind that is that what is definite to happen is just like already has happened. Because death is a definite fact in our life, is inevitable, it's just like you can say I'm already dead. Because there's no doubt about it. If that's the case, every time I want to say Allahu Akbar, Imam Sadiq referring to the meaning of that ayah says, Salli salata When you want to pray, pray like it's a farewell salat. Like going to your family, my dears, I'm going to pray my Isha and then goodbye. Wallah, I swear to God, if we can really create this for ourselves, that every time that we pray, it's the last namaz. Believe me, your namaz will be different. I have tested this with people of very shallow supposedly faith. And I told them, tell me, if your doctor tells you that you are diagnosed with a dying, I don't know, very fatal disease, any kind of disease, and you've got a few weeks to do, what are you going to do? Majority of them, born Muslims, they say that I spent to go for ziyarat, I, I stand and pray, do my ghaza, namaz and everything. And it has happened to me in, in few occasions in my life as well, that really, it, the, as, I, I, the, like, as if it's my last namaz and my last apology. I could not help it, I was in tears. Only if we, so what we need to really believe this fact, this inevitable, that Imam Sadiq says every time that we pray, if you see Imam Sajjad, his face goes pale because he really puts himself in this situation that this is my last namaz. This is the last opportunity that I have. Make it or break it. And I'm, I want to make sure that I make it. I want to make sure I do the best of it. Okay? This is the second also very helpful as Quran says. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Go practice these two, come back next year, inshallah, I'll tell you the rest. Is it fair? <laughs> Allahu Akbar. All right, I, I get to the end of it tonight so that I have one of the brothers, he said the good thing is that you finish every topic uh, every night. Uh, uh, it's not like serial movies that it kill, is killing us. I, I will get to the end of it. I'll cut it short and I'll get to the end of it. Inshallah, should the opportunity comes in the future, we elaborate on each one of them again. But so far, please remember, these two are so important. Number one is that every time we want to pray, we remember and remind ourselves time and again during the prayer that, hey, you are in the presence of God. God is watching you. Second, hey, this is your last namaz and this is your last option. Now, if anybody says, Sheikh, these are all philosophical mystical these are just sweet talks really it's not practical for me it doesn't work for me I've tried it many times and you have tried it I'm sure you have failed yourself as well let's face it I said yes I agree with that give me a practical solution you promise me that I do not go out tonight unless tomorrow morning I want to do namaz khashain namaz khashain is the namaz that it will written for me that it to recad namaz sob with the presence of the heart this is namaz khashain I want that a very practical solution to that. A very smart companion with the name of Abu Hamza the Somali that you know the Abu Hamza from him, he goes to Imam uh, Zainul Abidin and asks the same question. These are the gems of ahadith that I'm sharing with you. He goes to Imam uh, Sajjah and says, Yabna Rasulallah, don't get philosophical on, with me. Give me a practical solution. I want something that I can do namaz khashain. And this is the answer from Imam Zinul Abidin alayhi salam. Inna allaha mutammimun dhalika lil mu'minin bin nafila. The Imam says that do the previous ones that you learned, presence of God or meeting with God and the Nas namaz and all these things and there's more inshallah in the future we'll learn. But at the end if you fail, see how much of your namaz you were uh, like uh, you had your heart with you. Any part that you failed, if you really you want your full namaz written as namaz khashain, God has compensated for the believers with the nafile. 
anyone who wants his namaz, try your very best to enter your namaz. The parts that you are absent-minded, make sure you don't miss the nafil of that namaz. The, one of the benefits of the nawafil of the daily prayers is that compensation for the absence of the mind. Tomorrow morning, the nafil of namaz sub is how many rakat? Only two rakat before we pray. Imam Khoni Rahmatullah in Tahrir al-Wasile and I'm quoting the, the Risal al of Marja to know that there is a strong hadith behind this. In Tahrir al-Wasile, Imam Khomeini says that of namaz shab of the 11 record of namaz shab the last three record is more rewarding. If you don't have time for the 11, make sure you don't miss the, three, the last three record, shab and wat. If you don't have time for the three, the last one, wat, the, the one record, is more rewarding. Make sure you don't miss that one. If you don't even have time for that one, make sure you don't miss nafile namaz sub because nafile namaz sub is more rewarding than the whole namaz shab. Allah Akbar. You tell me why. The, the, the interesting thing is that why? Because by doing your nafile namaz sub only two rakat, simple two rakat namaz. You may not even do the second, the, the second surah for it. You know, for the nawafel, you can stick only to Surah Ham, that's it. Literally, I've tried it and with, with youngsters. Literally, it takes one minute. One minute to do nafalei namaz sub. But this nafalei namaz sub elevates your namaz sub to level of namaz khashain. You see? Is it a good deal or a bad deal? Even kids sitting here, tomorrow they can achieve namaz khashain. Look at the merciful God. How much you are indebted to Imam Zain al-Abidin for sharing this fact with us. Allahu Akbar. Go to the rawayat. You see when it comes to namaz zuhr especially, for the zuhr prayer, particularly we have this, whoever offers namaz zuhr with, you know, nafil namaz zuhr is four turakat before that. Four turakat. And as I said, every turakat nafil takes one minute. So we are talking about four minutes. Usually by the time that the azan starts and finishes, you have done your now, you can do your nafil. So the rawayat says that if you offer salat zor with its nafil, which is before salat zor, it will be written for you that this person has done salat al khashain salat zor qurbat illallah. This is how I told you that I promised you and I delivered that it is achievable. So the rest of it is up to you and I, whether we want to practice it or we don't want to practice it. Often we are so ambitious that I want to be this. Seriously? Here it is. This is a practical solution for it. And that's why I was hesitant to tell you, because then you may be in trouble like myself. Now that you know you are scholars, you are ulama, on the day of judgment we will be all on the fairness of trial. We will be all in trouble. Inshallah we won't be. Pray to God that bless us, inshallah, to practice what we learn. Please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to really ask and plead to the Almighty God, finishing our session five times the citation of Amman Yujib. Ya Allah, bless us to be among your uh, humble servants, those whose salat are accepted as salat al khashain those who are resurrected on the day of judgment as musallin, as faster, as hujjaj. Ya Allah, cast the nur of namaz to our heart. Cast the nur of fasting to our hearts. Ya Allah, we are asking you, pleading to you, so that the heart of our holy imam be pleased with us. Ya Allah, we are asking to you to hasten the quick, the appearance of our beloved Imam, Imam Zaman Ajjalallah Farajoy Sharif. Ya Allah, in the right and the haq of Imam Zaman Ajjalallah Farajoy Sharif, give the full and speedy recovery to all our patients all around the world, inshallah. Ya Allah, bless us to meet all our needs and wishes, inshallah. Our offspring, Ya Allah, include them among the lovers and the followers of Ahlul Bayt all the way to the Day of Judgment. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 بجاه محمد وآل محمد وبحرمة الفاتحة مع الصلبات